All right, here we go, guys. Back at it today. Um, I think hopefully <laughs> you got a chance to watch the the Bulls uh, documentary last night. I was I was so excited about it. I think based on Twitter, most of the country was watching it. A um, couple things stuck out to me. First one that Jordan had respect for his coaches, and you know something I see a lot today. Kids don't really respect their coaches. They they think their way is better, um, but. And there's a lot of lot of reasons, even parents. But what I and it, it stood out to me because it was two of Jordan's teammates, one in college and one in the pros, said he really respected Phil Jackson. He really respected um, Dean Smith. And you saw it in there was two times during the the video or the documentary where he's looking those coaches in the eye, and that's a big deal to me. When I see a kid look his coach in the eye, it just stands out big time. So if you want to impress your coach, look him in the eye and respect him because it's kind of a, a lost art, if you will. Now, for our workout today, we're gonna mix it up a little bit. Again, trying to keep you guys doing something different, not just the same drills every day. We're gonna go with post moves. Now, clearly I was a six foot tall guy that wasn't jumping real high. I wasn't much of a post player. Doesn't mean I don't you know, watch and study and understand post play. I uh, did a little bit you know, in grade school and even in high school a little bit, certainly not in college at all. But if you, you don't need to have 10 moves as a post player. You gotta have one or two. You have something that you at least feel comfortable with with your back to the basket now me as a perimeter player I was if I did get in the post I want to quickly turn myself into a perimeter player as quick as I can even if I'm 10 feet from the rim 8 feet from the rim if you can be comfortable facing the rim or with your back to the basket you're really tough to guard I think you guys like Tim Duncan the big fundamentals he could do he could do it with his back to the basket or facing the basket and it was just either or and it was just pretty and that way guys have to kind of respect everything you do. So everything we're gonna do, we're gonna to use tossbacks as our passer, but use your brother, use your sister, mom or dad, get, even a flip out works fine. We're just gonna throw it off the tossback, try to catch everything above the block and outside the lane. And then we're gonna probably land most of it on two feet and then make our move from there. Okay, so we're gonna start off our warm up. We're just gonna shoot off the glass. Just flip it out, shoot off the glass. Uh, if you don't have a, a great backboard in your, your hoop at your driveway, no problem. Just figure out how to use it though. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. So, first set, we're gonna go jump hooks off the glass. We're gonna make it a little hard, we're not going middle. We're gonna try and use the glass, so we're gonna go baseline side, catch, drop step a little bit. T typically, if you're using a jump hook, because the defender kind of cut you off on your drop step, so you gotta stop about halfway. Try not to totally face the rim, keep it more of a jump hook here, okay? All right, here we go.
break. So I'd much rather shoot a 25 footer than a jump hook with my left hand. <laughs> but, you know, I could tell every one of my misses was exactly the same. Short, you know, I didn't put it far enough off the glass, hit the, hit the my side of the rim short, and I didn't get that turnover. A lot of times you lay it off like this instead of turning that hand over. Turn it over, puts a proper spin on it, gives you that extra inch. You do this, it kind of hits the glass and stops. That happened on every one of my misses. I had to focus to make shots there. That was hard. All right, next set. Okay, we're gonna go step aways. Again, this is kind of more, like for me, I'm gonna make myself a perimeter player. I'm gonna reach out at the pass. We're gonna step with our baseline foot and reverse pivot opening to the middle in case there's a cutter we can see them. So baseline foot, reverse pivot, open middle. Typically with the angles that we're at, we're gonna have a really good backboard angle here. All right, here we go.
Okay, so those were step aways. We did jump hooks. Now we're gonna go with a, a more po a post move more at the basket. We're gonna go slide, slide, drop. My favorite post move, if I were gonna post up on somebody, i do this. Slide, slide, drop. Sometimes do it out of two dribbles, or one. We're gonna go two, dribble, dribble. The key on this, really sell it with your eyes. Make it look like you're going middle, middle, middle. You put a lean into it and then drop your foot. So the slide comes with the footwork. Slide, slide, drop. Drop, the, drop step to the rim then. All right, here we go. Slide, slide, drop.
right side, drop. Good move. Here we go. Next set. We're going to go middle up fake into a step across. So we're going to go middle, maybe one, maybe two dribbles, kind of setting up like you were going to go slide side drop. You're going to get about perpendicular to the backboard, up fake, and then step across. I remember uh, last, last name was Howard. I can't remember his first name, Josh. I uh, can't remember. Anyway, we played for Butler. Back when Butler made their runs to the Final Four, they went twice to the Final Four, champion, national championship game. And he was an undersized center forward, and he did this move constantly. And he would, he would just kind of step halfway across, a little fake. Everybody thought they could block his shot because they were bigger than him, but more athletic. And then he'd just keep going and give these little flips across the other side of the lane. I still remember it. And that was a long time ago. And, you know, he wasn't a great athlete. He was a good athlete. He wasn't huge, he was, you know, reasonably big, but everybody he played against was a better athlete and bigger, but he was super crafty. So we're gonna go step across to the middle, up fake, and then lunge across.
Good break. Push the other one in two bars. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, this calf is killing me. Here we go. So that was middle up fake, step across. Next one, inspired by watching some Michael Jordan highlights last night. We're gonna catch it with our back to the basket. We're gonna do a little shoulder shimmy. Okay, I like to do this as, or teach it as, as you're kind of sinking down, you're, you're making that defender think something's coming and then you throw a couple shoulder shimmies in there and now he's got to guess and oftentimes it just freezes the defender i mean but especially jordan's second time around with the bulls after he tied the first time came back the next three championships this was his move it was unguardable he'd throw a fade away in there so if you're older you want to get throw a fade away in there great i'll do a little fade away i can't really jump so not going to happen much but it's such a hard move because when you back in it kind of freezes him and makes him go back and then you step away and go either way you can go baseline side or middle with this one but take the time, get that little shoulder, put a little pause in there on him. All right, here we go.
All right. Last set. Right. Jump hook, step away, slide. Middle, Jordan. Pound and spin. Right. We're going to turn on the catch. One, maybe two dribbles. Face middle like you're going to turn and go to the middle. Face middle, and then we're going to spin out of it. So it's meant to be quick. Watch Bryce if you want to see quickness. Don't watch me. Okay, I'm going to get there, make him really lean into it, think that I'm going to the rim, and spin. So kind of like a, an abbreviated version of the slide, slide, drop. I just kind of turn one time, quick turn back the other way. All right, here we go.
Alright. Good work, guys. So post moves again. You, don't, you might not be a post player. Uh, post players in general are kind of leaving the game, it seems like. But if you got one, maybe two moves, or you got one move and a counter, you're going to be tough to guard. Plus, you're going to have confidence. You might have somebody smaller on you and say, hey, let's just take him inside, get it to me. Um, you see that with great players. They can, they can play inside, outside. You saw last night with Jordan, a lot of mid-range, never shot any threes. Now, the game's obviously different today, but he was a master at that mid-range game. Backboard, 15, 18-foot one dribble pull-ups, just a complete master of it. Now, last thing I want to say about last night, there was a time there in the, in the uh, documentary where he was in his rookie year. In fact, they were in the preseason. He hadn't even played a regular season game. And he was looking around the hotel for his teammates. I think this was the day of the game. And he walked in a room and found most of his teammates doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. And Jordan immediately said, guys, I ain't into this. I'm out. Because his, his goals were so high up here that anything that didn't help him reach that just wasn't going wasn't gonna to cut it. Now, even though these are, you know, there's a lot of peer pressure in that moment, right? He's 21 years old. He's got all these older teammates. He just got to the team. He's trying to make his way, and they're doing something he knows is wrong. It's not going to help him become the best player in the world. Sorry, guys, I'm out. And that kind of set the tone very quickly. Hey, this guy's different. This might be our new leader. So I want to challenge you guys, right? I, and I've certainly been in those situations where I've done the right thing, walked away, I've done the wrong thing, stayed. But when you set the tone and say, no, this doesn't match up to my values, my, my system of belief and my goals, I'm going the other way. You become a leader, and we need more leaders. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow.